Welcome to War Game, the best RTS in all of the universe. First thing you want to do after you download the game is uh, take note of what is a really good attempt by Eugen to have a nice UI, but it makes it impossible to do battle. And it is these label types. Uh, we have when they when they clump up like this, we can't easily look at what these are and know what they are. We've got a big battle to manage. And when they're constantly jumping around and changing, I mean, this unit right here is all the way right here. It's just, it's very bad. So all you need to do is go into options, interface. You need to do these two things, icon types. Really, actually, the most important thing to do, label styles, European escalation, 100%. This is what needs to happen right here. Label styles, European escalation. That's it right there. Game changer. Once that happens, now we know exactly what we got on the field. Oh, I got Abrams. I got Pivads. You'll you'll know what these units do. I picked America. It's pretty simple. Okay. So now that our unit types are uh, set the way they need to be, and now we can reasonably look at where everything is. Notice I have notice I have a few things going on here. I've got these units that are blinking, units that are not blinking. What's that all about? Well, recon. Somebody sees me, and I do not see them. Just to show you, when we started this video, you might be thinking, okay, there's one or two things in Foxtrot. Uh, Hayes has been kind enough to turn all of all of his weapon systems. And so I can show you what is actually hiding in all of Foxtrot. A very large army. And the recon, even though this longbow has exceptional optics, optics exceptional, infantry stay very well hidden in hedges. And I won't be able to fully identify this unit until it actually fires on me, even though I'm hovering right over it. So, again, that is the difference that recon needs to make. You have to have recon in your decks. Uh, something other else to figure out here before we get too far off the road. I play with sticky selection, which means uh, I have this unit selected and there's nothing I can press to unselect that except for a number on the keypad, any number. Uh, for example, the numbers, if I shift select these, I can press control one, for example. I'll press 0 to deselect them. Anytime I press 1 again, I have them all selected. So you can control group. Uh, splitting is absolutely uh, important. You need to be able to split your units. You can regroup them. And again, what I did is click split and then left click somewhere on the battlefield and regroup. I always split. I play with every unit is split. The other thing to do, let's say I need these lab scouts to get up to the front line. One way to do it is to right click and wait a month of Sundays. Or I press move fast where I want them to go. They will find the quickest route to that area, which usually includes roads. So I'm going to message for Hayes to go uh, weapons hot on all his units. Uh, one thing you need to learn too, a command unit, all, it, all its only function and the way it, the reason it's priced so high is because it secures a zone. So if I got another command unit in this helicopter, I need to unload it. And now that's capturing this zone, which in the destruction mode of play drives my income. The more zones I have, the more income I have. But whoever wins or loses the game is whoever gets more kills than losses. Alright, you can go weapons hot. Okay. 
So now that we're weapons live here, oh, see he's already shoot. I already got missiles coming in from things in the bush. So, see that shooting at my pivads here. I need to get out there. I need to get eyes on. What I'm going to do here is select all my ground units that I want to attack. I'm going to use the function attack. The hotkey for that is also Q. This means these units will move forward until they have found something to engage and then they will stop and engage it. For these heavy tanks I'm actually just going to have them continually moving because I want these to soak up some of the shots instead of these Lab 25 scouts. So I'll actually hold back the Lab 25 scouts just a little bit. Everything else is attack moving except my anti-air. I don't want my anti-air to start moving up and engaging tanks. I'll do the same thing with the longbow. I'll do attack move to that point, but it won't go any further. Okay, we're good on the Abrams. Let's just have them stop there. Move our recon up continually. So move the recon up behind the front lines. Move this Bradley. This Bradley is armed with tow twos. We can Q move on that. But it's all about recon. Now that we have recon, we can clear out this field. we can see things. And things also appear when they shoot at us too. Sometimes. Sometimes they don't. As in the early beginning, nothing was nothing was visible even though I was taking incoming missile fire. I'm going to split these AGS because this one is very injured so I'm just going to reverse him out. And the reason I do reverse there is so he keeps his front armor exposed to the enemy fire. Now let's just show you what happens if things continue to move on without recon, let's pull our recon back. Basically all my troops will eventually die here. Something to keep in mind is logistics. That AGS can live to fight another day in this battle a hundred times over. A tank can come down to one bar health and go back to full health and back to one bar and full health and one bar and full health and one bar and full health a hundred times throughout the battle. So we called in some supplies to heal this guy up. Again, on that same vein, if I want these Humvees to occupy this town, and if I just right-click, they will start driving through the field. And the road speed difference is the speed is 80. That's on all terrains. But if they're moving along a road, it's 150. So right now, I want them to get there fast. I'm going to select them all. I pressed F, which would have also been a move fast command. Now they're going on the road. Now they're going 150 kilometers an hour. That Abrams is going off into its death because I've left him without recon. And it'll get a side shot. This is going to make it. Now, the Humvees. See something shoots... So, uh, someone took me out already. Look at that. One, two. Need to unload before I before I get to enemy territory. You gotta unload, even though I got wiped out anyway. That's the way it works. Those are the very, 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 very basics. We'll pick up again in the armory, and we'll describe briefly difference between units. Thank you. Next thing we're going to briefly talk about is the, if you're at the home screen, go to deck, and you're going to need to build some decks because the decks they give you are garbage, but they're better than nothing because you can't play in a battle without a deck. So, uh, look below this video and copy some of the links I sent you. I'm giving away decks here, so just click on import. Uh, this one that I've got on my clipboard is Commonwealth Russo. And I'm going to control V that here. And I'm going to import. And it's right there. Okay, I guess they're, I don't know if that's in alphabetical order or not, but it's Commonwealth Russo. So you can just go in and edit this deck. And for the new new, we need to discuss a few things. We'll start off with infantry. And we will. Pin this for comparison. So things you need to know about on infantry 
the assault rifle is has an HE power and an HE power is only going to be good against soft targets. Soft targets are other infantry and vehicles with zero armor. Other than that, this assault rifle is going to do nothing against anything with any armor value. See, the armor value on any infantry unit is zero, 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 zero. Uh, next are the anti-tank weapons, and you're always looking uh, for an AP power. You need to weigh how much ammo they carry and the rate of fire. SAS is a special unit that also has a stinger weapon that has a range against helicopters and airplanes. That is the basics on infantry. Then you have all sorts of uh, specialized infantry. This is a two-man team. You can see the size of the team by its strength. Uh, and it carries a Milan II guided missile with a range of 2450 meters. This is a good anti-tank infantry. Uh, other specialized infantry would be the napalm. Uh, in addition to throwing fire, these guys can also walk through fire without taking any kind of morale penalty. So you have uh, regular militia, elite, uh, shock troops, uh, different uh, optics on all of the optics on every infantry unit is going to be a medium, and we just discussed infantry, so we'll go, or we just discussed recon, so we will go briefly look at that again. Uh, optics very good, and you will learn very quickly to understand these little symbols on the bottom on the right side of these units that go from good to very good to exceptional. Something else to think about as well is stealth. So this recce, where are these guys? You can see they wear ghillie suits and they have exceptional stealth compared to a pathfinder which is just in BDUs, which has very good stealth. So stealth determines if you're in those hedgerows and if you're in those woods, are you going to be seen or not? There are also helicopters that have stealth values, although um, nothing in the Commonwealth. Uh, what comes to mind is the Acula, the Soviet Acula helicopter has a stealth value. Uh, while we're on helicopters, I have a you have multi-role and you have missile missile ships. Uh, this particular deck that I'm looking at, anti-vehicle missiles, and then uh, some of these cheaper gunships that uh, are are good support roles, but uh, burn through their rockets pretty quick in about two salvos. This guy's gone. Uh, vehicles is tracked or wheeled, and it's usually unarmored, unarmored or very light armor. So this is, again, here's these armor values we were talking about. One front, side, back, top, and they vary. Here is a 12 front. Now, if this thing had a different cannon on it, it'd probably be in the tank category. But since this uh, is a derp gun and it just has an HE power, they really didn't put it in with the tanks. This is an anti-infantry unit. Again, AP, think armored piercing. HE, think high explosive. So while we're talking about tanks, uh, the best British tank we have here, the Challenger line, the Challenger 2. Note, front armor, 23, 11, 6, and 4. Um, that front armor is huge. So, for instance, if we rank up the AP power of this gun as being of 8, if it wants to go head-to-head -head with a Challenger 2, there's a bunch of factors involved, but most likely this thing will have to be uh, very close to that Challenger 2 before it could hit it and penetrate it for any amount of damage. Uh, in addition to that, the range on its gun is 1925 compared to 2275. So this Centurion, this Leopard AS-1 going one-to-one -one against a bigger tank uh, will fail. 
the opportunities for these light tanks are just like they are in real life flanking and side shots and traveling with uh, more than one having four four or six grouped up and spread out uh, what else do we have we have logistics uh, the worst unit in the game hand down hands down is a command helicopter this should not be in any of your decks and switch to a uh, for the same price you can get an infantry unit in a helicopter and uh, these the infantry command units you can hide in buildings hedgerows and woods and a landed helicopter is a very soft invisible target uh, I would stay away from the command tanks. Uh, again, a command unit, if it is fighting, then it kind of defeats the purpose. If it is fighting, it means someone has either taken over your zone or the zone you're trying to tank is not secure. And again, if your command unit is fighting, then nothing is protecting it. So. Uh, then you have supply vehicles. The amount that they carry is something to pay attention to. This is one of the smallest units in the game, the Stalwart. Its supply is 600 liters. However, it's amphibious. Something else to consider in this game is amphibious vehicles. Supply helicopters are a good choice. You can get to the field and then back to your FOB. Uh, not everybody plays with a FOB, but I recommend having one FOB and not bringing more than that. A FOB essentially gives you the most supply for the money. So if you look, find something else that costs 75 points in terms of a supply unit, uh, this will give you 16,000. Let's say we brought in three of these NAN caddies. Three NAN caddies would be under 6,000 liters for more, the pri more than the price of one FOB. Uh, your vehicles who are wounded can also drive back to the FOB. Okay, what else do we have? Support category. Uh, support is broken down into two, th there's two things in a support category anti-air and artillery please stay away from artillery while you're new get comfortable on how the battles take place on the ground that being said you will need anti-air uh, a couple things to two things of note in anti-air there are radar anti-air and then there are non-radar which would be infrared or guided so uh, radar anti-air are more susceptible to anti-radar aircraft or seed aircraft seed aircraft have a special missile system on them that hunts out enemy radar based AA and look at the range on that at 4200 meters and the electric voodoo in the Canadian Air Force is one that has uh, <clears throat> basically there's other seed aircraft that have a longer range than this so if you look at this 4200 meters and you go back to your marksmen that have a range on helicopters of 2625 that electric voodoo most likely if it's veteran C is okay will uh, take it out with one or two of these anti radar missiles uh, Real briefly on veterancy, you can, uh, I can bring in 10 Harden or 7 Veteran, and you'll see these vary throughout different units. Your units will rank up with veterancy throughout the battle, so you don't need to always bring in the 7 Veteran. You can bring in Hardened. They do their job, and they rank up, and they become better. Veterancy effects... Uh, morale, accuracy, uh, all these little, all these little nuances like that. So, anyway, that was briefly into battles and briefly into unit types. There's plenty of decks for you to get started. Thank you very much.